our second application is time dependent force of newton's second law so in this case we will deal with the force which is dependent on time as the time changes the force also changes and we can express such a force as f equals to f not sin omega t where omega t changes with time as the t value changes with time the harmonic function sin trigonometric function sin also changes with time and as sin omega t changes with time our force is changing with time so f equals to f not sin omega t represents a variable force a variable force which is acted upon any system after a regular interval of time okay so f equals to f not sin omega t and if i write by newton's second law force is equals to mass times acceleration this can be represented as f not sin omega t where acceleration as we know that can be represented as double derivative d square x by dt square and in short form we also write it as x double dot so hence we can write the above equation as mass times x double dot is equals to f not sin omega t now here uh, if you want to calculate the velocity we have to integrate this we know that but before integration let's take this m on the right hand side and this will look like x double dot which is equals to f not upon m sin omega t be very careful here the force is the force is time dependent here so the in this main equation be very careful with this main equation on the left hand side of this equation the force f that is the total force which is changing with time f not is the maximum value we know that sin is a sin function is a sinusoidal function so it changes with time okay so uh, like if omega t value is 0 uh, omega t value is 0 then this will give you sin 0 that will give you capital this f on the left hand side as 0 if sin omega t if omega t is 90 degree in that case it is maximum and f will be equals to f not so f not is something which is constant f not is not changing in the course of the whole experiment only f is changing because f is dependent on sin f not is not dependent here on sin so this sin factor on the right hand side of this equation makes it a variable force so x double dot is equals to f not by m sin omega t where f not by m is something which is constant we will assume it constant while integrating because we have to integrate to figure out the velocity to uh, get the velocity for those who don't know uh, we can integrate the acceleration a with respect to dt that will give us the velocity b and here when i integrate this x double dot with respect to dt that will obviously give me the velocity on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will get integration but i am directly taking this f not by m out of the integration because this is just a constant so integration of sin omega t dt now we know the outcome of this integral will be x double dot will give me the velocity x dot you can also write it as velocity v and on the right hand side we will get integration of sin omega t that will be equals to minus cos omega t and by though there is no such chain rule but uh, we know that by substituting by met method of substitution we know that integration of sin omega t will give me minus cos omega t upon omega why it will give me upon omega okay let's uh, look at about this stuff this part because some people have some simple confusions so let's assume that omega t is equals to z where uh, omega t is equals to z and if i differentiate it with respect to t i'll get omega dt is equals to dz we know that yes and dt can be written as a dz by omega so if you transform it here you will get integration of sin z because omega t is z and dt will be written as dz by omega and this omega is just a constant you can take it out so i hope this is clear that by method of substitution in integration we can get that omega in the denominator now plus a constant c so let's write it plus c let's make it c1 initially because it's our first constant now let's put our uh, initial conditions so according to our initial conditions 
at t equal to 0 when the time was 0 initially let's say there was some velocity and this velocity we will call it as initial velocity so i'll call it as u naught and the position of the particle at that very instant was x equal to x naught let's substitute here in the above equation these initial conditions so the velocity of the above system will be this is your v on the left hand side we have which is represented as x dot and that is equals to f naught by m for t being zero you can see here cos omega t that will become I am writing here on the right hand side cos omega t when t is 0 this will give you cos 0 and cos 0 is nothing but 1. So you will be getting f naught by m omega and that too with the negative sign because there is already a negative in the expression plus c1 and x naught in that case is nothing but u naught. So let us make on the left hand side as well our equation as u naught. And let's remove this x dot that is our u naught only so this will become u naught is equals to minus f naught by m omega plus c1 i have just substituted in the above equation the initial condition so at t equal to 0 cos will become 1 and on the left hand side the velocity will become u naught initial velocity plus c1 so from here this implies c1 is nothing but u naught plus f naught by m omega that is our constant integral constant okay integration constant let us substitute here in the previous equation and putting it in this equation here we will get the velocity v of the particle that is equals to equals to f naught by m omega and there is a negative sign let us take the negative inside only for the time being minus cos omega t plus c1 what's c1 u naught plus f naught by m omega i hope this is clear to all of you now next is we have to get the position of the particle at any given instant this is the velocity of the particle at any instant t okay if you if you substitute t in the first equation uh, that is our this equation you will get the acceleration so i am just writing here acceleration of the particle if you substitute t value you will get the instantaneous acceleration of that system if you substitute here you will get the instantaneous velocity of the particle let us calculate the instantaneous position of the particle to calculate that we have to integrate it once again we know that so integration of velocity with respect to time is nothing but let us write it v dt is nothing but position x instantaneous position so here if i integrate on both the sides obvious it is that on the left hand side you will get position on the right hand side okay let us try to integrate it so uh, f naught m omega we know that there is no time dependent factor on this f naught upon m omega and let us keep the negative sign here also only the cos omega t has a time dependent factor t cos just let me make a correction here it is cos omega t so cos omega t dt so we have to integrate this negative sign i have already taken out plus next factor is u naught dt plus again f naught omega m omega that is constant so this is dt let me repeat again we have integrated the above equation the red equation let us integrate let us see what is the result here so x is equals to minus f naught upon m omega integration of cos omega t we know that it is plus sin omega t upon omega y upon omega i have already explained this it is from substitution so plus sin omega t upon omega plus here you will get u naught uh, dt it is so you will get t and there again no other factor so it will be f naught by m omega t plus c2 where c2 represents our second integration constant so let us again put our initial conditions after putting the initial conditions let us see what we get so putting the initial conditions we will get here 
uh, at t equal to 0. The velocity was u0, we already know that, but position was x0. Because t was 0, we were initially at some particular location, let us say it was x0. Then from this green equation, we can say that substituting x is equals to x0 on the right hand side. Here we have t being 0. So if t is 0, sine 0 is 0, the first factor goes. Second factor t being 0, it goes. Third factor t being 0 goes. So you left with only c2 on the right hand side. So our c2 is nothing but x0. Let us substitute it back and write our position, instantaneous position of the particle for a time dependent force is will be uh, minus f naught upon m omega square y square this omega and this omega multiplies omega square sine omega t plus mu u naught t plus f naught t by m omega and the value of c2 that is x naught. If we try to figure out the dimensions of each parameter here, we know that sin omega t does not have any dimension, right? Okay. Uh, other than that, all these physical quantities, all these physical quantities have some dimensions. And if you try to figure out the dimensions of f0 by m omega square u0 into t distance speed into time, that is a distance f0 t by omega m omega, that will be again uh, distance only. So, these, uh, this equation follows uh, our basically dimensional equality on left hand side as well as right hand side. This is our position function. So, position function tells you the position of the particle at any given instant.